You know how creators always say, drop your questions below. I will answer them in the next video. Well, I actually did. I asked you guys for questions about coding, freelancing, YouTube, or even life, and you delivered. Some were deep, some were funny, some were straight up existential. So today I'm answering 20 of them raw and unfiltered. I've just cleaned them a little bit so they're easier to follow, but the meaning is 100% yours. If we haven't met, I'm Pete and I've been coding professionally since 2012 and my job with this channel is to help you learn to code, grow your skills and motivate you while actually enjoy the process without all the fluff. So let's dive in. Our first question is from a YouTube subscriber. What's an unpopular opinion you have about tech or the creator economy? Something most people wouldn't agree with. Oof. I've got a few, but here's one. Learning to code isn't hard. The hard part is to stay consistent. Most people quit when the excitement fades, right when they're about to actually get good. The ones who make it aren't geniuses. They are the ones who kept showing up even on the days they didn't feel like it. That's the real secret to success. Boring consistency. The next question, how do I start freelancing and get my first project or job? What skills do I need? How do I find clients? And how can I use AI properly while studying? That's a lot in one go. I love it. So here's the truth. You start small. Don't wait for the perfect project. Look for real problems you can solve for real people. A small business that needs a simple landing page, a friend who wants an online portfolio, those projects count. Don't chase clients, chase problems. When you fix people's problems, you earn their trust. And that trust is what turns into clients, testimonials, and eventually money. As for AI, use it like a power tool. It will help you move faster, but it can't build for you. Learn first and then let AI accelerate you. I'm 20 and torn between coding and copywriting. I like both. Which should I focus on long term? That's such a good problem to have. If you enjoy both, simply explore both. Try projects in each field and pay attention to one thing. Which one makes time disappear? Coding builds systems. Copywriting builds stories. Both can change lives. But the one that makes you lose track of time, that's your path. That's curiosity and that's your best career compass. I want to start freelancing from scratch, use AI the right way for coding and grow my YouTube channel. But where do I even begin? Ha! <laughs> yes, the classic I want to do everything at once energy. I relate deeply. Start with one goal. Seriously, focus on learning to code first because that's the foundation. Once you've got that down, use AI to speed up your workflow and understand your own code better. Then start sharing your progress online. Show your learning process, what you're building, what mistakes you're making. That combination, learn, build, share, that's the secret formula for creators who grow fast and build a real audience. I want to become a full stack web developer. Can you give me a beginner-friendly roadmap that covers new trending technologies? Absolutely. Start with basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then move on to a front-end framework like React. For the backend, pick Node.js or Python. Once you can build small apps on your own, congratulations. You're already full stack enough to start freelancing or applying for junior jobs. The key here is building real projects, not collecting tutorials. And if you want a structured path, I genuinely recommend Scrimba's full stack career path. It's interactive, easy to follow, and doesn't feel like studying, which we all hate. Next question, I'm 16 and still in school. Should I start learning to code now or wait until college? And if I start now, will I even remember it later? Wait, the best time to start was yesterday. The next best time is today. Don't wait for the perfect time or for someone to tell you you're ready. You will forget stuff either way. Even experienced developers Google things every day. You will build that mindset early, the way of thinking like a programmer. That sticks. So just start, have fun with it, and trust me, your future self will be so glad you did. Question seven. I've been thinking about going all in on AI and making it my main focus. Is that a smart move right now or should I stay broader? AI is the new shiny thing right now and for good reason. But here's the deal. AI is built on top of coding. If you don't understand how code works, you will end up using AI tools blindly. So to answer your question, yes, learn AI, but don't skip the fundamentals. Learn to code, build real projects, and then use AI to level up. AI is not replacing developers, it's replacing developers who refuse to adapt. Next question. Hi Pete, are you from Cyprus? Yes, born and raised. And just to clear something up, you don't need to live in Silicon Valley to have a career in tech. 
I started from a small island and built a career, a YouTube channel, and a whole community around it. So if you've got internet and curiosity, you've got a shot. And by the way, until two years ago, I had like 30 megabits of download speed. Next question. Is good design important for full stack developers? And what extra skills are valuable in today's AI driven world? Good question. Design matters, but don't panic. You don't need to become a designer. You just need to make things that don't hurt people's eyes. The skills that matter most now are communication, curiosity, and problem solving. Anyone can learn frameworks, but if you can talk through your ideas clearly and collaborate, you are already ahead of 90% of the devs out there. What are the most important steps to become a successful developer today? It comes down to three words, learn, build, share. Learn the fundamentals, build projects that actually excite you, and share your progress on GitHub, LinkedIn, wherever. That cycle will open more doors than any course or certificate. Success isn't luck, it's consistency with direction. How do software engineers make money without a job? Some say they earn through projects. How does that work? Yep, totally possible. Freelancing, content creation, building apps or tools, even teaching online. Once you know how to build something valuable, a website, an automation script, a course, people will pay you for it. Think of it like this. Your skills are your currency. The more you create, the more you earn. Next question. I started learning to code, but now I feel lost and need guidance. What should I do? Been there. Everyone hits that I'm stuck face. Here's my rule. Pick one language, one course, and one project. No more hopping between tutorials like Netflix show. Finish that project, even if it's tiny or ugly. Momentum comes from finishing and not from perfection. I want to become a freelancer. Is learning web development still a good idea? 100,000%. Web development is still one of the easiest, most practical ways to start freelancing. Every business needs a site, from restaurants to coaches to your cousin's YouTube channel. Learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and one framework and suddenly you are that person who can solve a real world need. That's how you get paid. I've been learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for three months. I left my job to focus on this, but boot camps are so expensive. What should I do? First of all, respect for taking that leap. That's huge. You don't need to spend thousands to learn. There are incredible free options. Scrimba, The Odin Project, Free Code Camp, and of course, YouTube. It's not about how much you spend, it's about how long you stick with it. Keep learning, keep building, and you will be surprised how fast things will click. I am a beginner interested in data science. I can study five to six hours a week and was thinking of buying the 1350 Harvard X course. Is it worth it? And does the certificate actually help on LinkedIn? I love the dedication, man, but no, you don't have to spend all that money into a course. Focus on Python, data analysis, and projects that show results. Certificates can decorate your profile and your walls for sure, but projects prove your skills. If I were you, I would invest time and not money. Build things that make recruiters say, oh my God, this person gets it. I've completed front-end development and I'm trying to get an internship from Pakistan. How can I find one when most platforms seem local to other countries? First of all, hi Pakistan. That's a great question. Don't underestimate global reach. Companies hire remotely all the time now. Start posting your work on GitHub and LinkedIn. Show what you're building, projects, code snippets, anything. When people can see your skills, your location doesn't really matter. Of course, in some cases it does matter, but persistence and proof of work always beats borders. The next one is from Luvin Digarp on Discord. I'm building a table tennis club website using React, MUI, Firebase, and TensorFlow. After that, I want to learn Web3. Do you think that's a good idea? That's sick, man. I love that idea. Here's my take. Finish what you're working on first. That's where the real growth happens. Then, if you're still curious, explore Web3, but don't chase shiny trends too early. Finish what you start is the most underrated skill in tech. Finish, then evolve. The next one was posted from Gambino482 on Discord. I started coding in my 40s while juggling other responsibilities. What habits can help me stay consistent and avoid burnout? First off, Huge, huge respect. That's not easy and it is inspiring. The biggest thing, don't compare your timeline to anyone else's. Learn at your pace, build projects that genuinely interest you and rest when you need. The coding game is not a sprint. It's a lifelong skill that compounds over time. You're playing the long game and that's a good thing. Next question is from Larry Orlov on Discord. I'm a college freshman in computer science. How can I make the most of these next few years 
to prepare for a tech career. Use college to connect with people and do projects, not just grades. Join hackathons, do group projects, post your work online. Professors teach theory. The real learning comes from building things that don't work and figuring out why they don't work. That's the difference between a graduate and a developer. The next question is from Pranav on Instagram. I'm moving from a management role into tech with no experience. What kind of roles should I focus on? Start with bridge roles, ones that mix tech with communication, project management, product ownership, business analysis. They will use your existing skills and get you close to the tech side. Once you get comfortable, start coding on the site, maybe simple automations, internal tools, dashboards, whatever you like. The combo of leadership and tech is rare and companies love it and pay a lot. And that's all 20. If your questions didn't make it, don't worry, I will do a part two soon. If you like this one, hit that like button so I know you want part two and drop your question below. You can also join our Discord server or follow me on Instagram, all links down below. Thanks for watching you legend, I'm Pete and I'll see you on the next one.